It was the day before Kipper's birthday. He was busy with his paints, making, making party invitations in a large letter to the painters. Please come to my birthday party tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Don't be late. He hung them up to dry and set about making a cake. Kipper had not made a cake before. He put some currants and eggs and currants and flour and sugar into the, and currants into a bowl. Then he stirred the mixture until his arms ached. Next, he added some cherries and stirred them in once more. Then he rolled it with a rolling pin and looked at what he made. I've made a flat thing, he said. Kipper squeezed the flat thing into a cake shape and watched it bake in the oven. To his surprise, it changed itself slowly into a sort of heap, but it smelled good. He put, he put the last remaining cherry on top for decoration. By this time, the party invitations were dry. I'll deliver them tomorrow, yawned Kipper. It's not too late now. Kipper woke bright and early on his birthday. His first thought was, balloons, we must have balloons. But as he rushed downstairs, another thought popped into his head, invitations. Kipper ran all the way to his best friend's house and stuffed the invitations into Tiger's hands. That one's yours. Those are for the others, he panted. Can't stop balloons. When he had gone, Tigger opened the invitation. Please come to my birthday party. Tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Don't be late. At 12 o'clock, Kipper carefully placed his cake on the table and sat down to wait for a knock at the door. He waited and he waited, but nobody came, not even Tiger. The cake smelled good and Kipper began to feel hungry. At one o'clock, he ate the cherries from the top. Two o'clock passed. Still, nobody came. Kipper pulled off a large piece of cake and broke it, broke it open to see if there was a cherry inside. There were two. He ate them both and began to feel better. By five o'clock, there were no more cherries to be found. Kipper stretched out on the table, feeling very full and very sleepy. Kipper slept through the night, evening and into the night. He dreamt that he was climbing a mountain made of cake and dodging great cake boundaries as they crashed towards him. Even when the sun streamed through his window the next morning, he did not wake but snored. Peacefully until noon when he was woken by the knock at the door. His friends had come. Happy birthday, Kipper, said Jack. Happy birthday, Kipper, said Holly. Happy, and happy, birth, happy return, said Togo. Kipper blinked and he rubbed his eyes. But my birthday was yesterday, he said sleepily. They looked at the invitation. Please come to my birthday party tomorrow at 12 o'clock. Don't be late. Kipper looked puzzled. So my birthday is not until tomorrow, he said. We haven't missed after all. No, 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 said Tigger. Your birthday must have been tomorrow, the day before yesterday. Kipper looked puzzled again. Tigger went on. So yesterday it would have been today, but today was yesterday. Do you see? Kipper did not see. His brain was beginning to ache. So he said, cake anyone? And then he remembered that he had eaten it all. Never mind, said Tigger. Why don't you open your presents? The present seemed a bit odd. The first was a napkin from Jake. The second was some candles from Holly. Very useful, said Kipper, trying to not look disappointed. But the third was the most useful of all. It was a cake. It's a cake. And that's the end. <laughs>